So let's start this video series on rings with focus on two simple rings that are kind of easy to see and draw. And this will be the cyclopropane and the cyclopentane rings. Now, the cyclopropane is a C3 ring, and you can tell by the fact I had to use a little rubber holders to build this, that this is not a particularly stable ring, although it's a synthetically interesting ring. Now, when we look at this from above, we were to draw the line dot structure. We'd have something very boring, we'd have a triangle like this. We're forcing the bond angles here to be 60 degrees, and this is substantially less than the 109 degrees that we'd expect for a tetrahedral uh, sp3 carbon. There is only one way to build this ring. A row of hydrogens above, and the row of hydrogens below. But because we do have hydrogens both above and below the ring, so the three that would connect here, here, and here, and three that would connect below, three there and there, we actually need to start expressing the stereochemistry when we start talking about how things are aligned if we have more than one species on this ring. So this is your C3 ring. How about if we go to something like cyclopentane? Well, cyclopentane, we have five carbons. Now, our five carbon ring here, there's actually three different ways we can align the carbons. The simplest is to put all five in plane, but the thing is that this is actually the least stable of the conformations because it's gonna basically force all the carbons into, let's see here, what's 1 8 divided by five? 36 degree, no, more than that. Um, 36 divided by five, 72 degrees, still less than 109, 109 degrees we want. But we can see in this conformation, similar to what we had with the cyclopropane is that we have carbons above and below the ring. So we do need to actually specify the stereochemistry of things are bound to it. Now there are also two options for reading this ring string. The first is to create what's called the envelope conformation. So in the envelope conformation, we have one of the carbons actually puckered out of the ring. So if we were to draw that, representing the stereochemistry, we'd have a wedge going up and a wedge going up. So this would be the envelope, make sure, the envelope confirmation. In the envelope confirmation, we relieve a little bit of the stress by basically creating what looks like closer to a tetrahedral for the two atoms connected to the puckered up atom. A second confirmation we can get is the half chair. Now with the half chair, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one atom above and one atom below the ring. And that's a little hard to see with this little ring think model. But if we were to draw it on the board, we'd have one wedge corresponding to our atom going up, one wedge corresponding to the carbon going down, and the two are connected by a bond. So basically we're gonna take one part of the ring and kind of twist it, and this will relieve the strain. Now, the half chair and the envelope are the two that are the more stable ones. So typically it's going to want to exist in these two conformations, although it does occasionally, passing between the two, go through your uh, planar conformation. So, this is cyclopropane, cyclopentane. Let's talk about cyclohexane next.